Hey there, Emmanuel here from WebDevFuel, and in this one, we're going to go over exactly how to create a to-do list application by using Golang and HTMX. Now, in the last one, we went over how to create a simple counter by using HTMX and Golang, but as many of you said, that was a very, very basic example, which didn't really have a lot of use cases in the real world. But in this one, Again, we're going to try and build something that's closer to a real-world application, and in this case, it is a to-do list application. So let's start by, first of all, setting up our routing. So in order to do that, let's navigate here to our browser, and then you can go ahead and search here for the Shi router that we're going to be using in order to allow us to essentially make requests to Golang and then return HTML back to our browser. So let's go ahead and copy this part right over here and then inside a new folder that I've just created here for this project. Let's go ahead and first of all initialize our Golang project so we can go ahead and install the router and in order to do that simply type in here go mod init and then the path to your git project. So in this case it's going to be github.com forward slash webdevfuel and then let's say htmx go to do. Now, after we do that, now we can go ahead and paste this part right over here that is going to allow us to have routing inside of our application. Now, let's go ahead and open our editor and inside the editor, let's go ahead and create a new main.go file. And then inside of this file, let's simply go ahead and copy this example here from the documentation of the Shear router. So we can avoid having to type all of this. And then let's go ahead, paste all of this in here. And let's also go ahead and make a couple adjustments here. Let's go ahead and ignore this. Let's say here, hello world. And then here, let's go ahead and change this to only local host. After doing that, if we go ahead here and open a new uh, tab inside of our terminal, and then we go ahead and we curl here, localhost 3000. And then let's go ahead and move here to htmx go to do. Now, if we go ahead and run here our server, so this command essentially allows us to go ahead and run this Go program. And then if we go ahead and curl here the port uh, 3000 on localhost, as you can see, we get back here the hello world. Next, we'll go ahead and install Prettier alongside a plugin that is going to allow us to format our Go templates. So let's go ahead and first of all, initialize here a new npm project by typing pnpm init, or if you prefer, you can simply go ahead and use npm or yarn. And then after doing that, go ahead and type the following command again to install Prettier and then the Go template plugin. After installing both of these packages, let's go ahead and tell Prettier that we want it to use this specific plugin. So let's move back here to our editor and in here, let's go ahead and type prettier.config.cgs. And then inside of this config file, let's go ahead and simply paste all of this code. And as you can see, we have in here this plugin. And then we also want to override the configuration by telling Prettier to use this particular plugin. So as you can see, we have here go-template inside of HTML files because we want to be able to use the HTML extension inside of our Go templates uh, and still be able to use this plugin to format all of our templates. With this done, we can now move to setting up HTMX and we'll start by first of all installing Vite and then HTMX in order to be able to bundle it into a JavaScript file. So let's start by typing in here pnpm-d and then Vite. And after this also, let's go ahead and install HTMX by typing pnpm add htmx.org. Now let's go ahead and set up Vite by creating a new configuration file. So let's go ahead and inside our editor, type in here vite.config.js and then inside of this configuration file, simply go ahead and type all of this or if you, if you prefer, I leave a link in the description below so you can go ahead and check this entire project on GitHub. But as you can see, we have in here, first of all, our entry point, with, uh, which at this moment it is only one. So later we're going to go ahead and install Sortable in order to be able to do drag and drop inside of our to-do list application. But at the moment, as you can see, this is an array and we only want to go ahead and resolve here our source 
htmx.js file, which we'll create in just a second. Then you want to go ahead and configure all of this stuff and also set in here our out directory and also make sure that this directory doesn't get cleaned each time that we rebuild our project. So with this done, let's go back here to our package.json file and in here, let's go ahead and create a new script, which we'll call dev. And in here, we want to go ahead and run vit build and then dash dash watch. And what this essentially means is that instead of using vit's uh, development mode, because we are bundling into a JavaScript file, we simply want to go ahead and build this, but in watch mode. So each time that we make changes to our files, we want V to automatically go ahead and rebuild all of this for us. Now we still need one last change here inside of our package.json file, and that is to ensure that this is of type module. So go ahead and make sure that you have this inside of your package.json file, and then let's go ahead and save this. And finally, we can go ahead and create our htmx.js file. So let's go ahead and first of all, create our source folder. So again, first of all, make sure that you have in here your source folder first. And then after that, go ahead and type htmx.js. And in here, let's go ahead and import htmx from htmx.org. And let's go ahead and assign it here to our window. So with all of this done, we can now move back here to our project folder. And if we did all of this correctly, if we now go ahead and type in here pnpm run dev, as you can see, the build started and we get here a static htmx.js file. So inside of our static folder. So if we go ahead and take a look, as you can see, all of this was bundled into a JavaScript file that we can use in our browser. Now, before moving forward, let's make sure that we are ignoring our node modules folder. So let's go ahead and create a new .kit ignore file. And in here, let's add node modules. Now let's go ahead and render our first Go template. And we can also use this opportunity to go ahead and see if we can import our htmx.js file correctly into the browser. So let's start by creating it here a new templates folder. And then inside of this folder, simply go ahead and create a new file that's called index.html. Now inside of this file, simply go ahead and type all of this. Or again, if you want, you can simply go ahead and copy it from the GitHub project into your uh, local project. And after doing that, let's go ahead and move back to our main.go file which we have down here. And let's go ahead and replace a couple of things. So instead of returning here a simple JSON, which says hello world, we can go ahead and render our template. So first let's go ahead and delete this line and then go ahead and type in here temple. Let's go ahead and ignore the error. And then we want to import here HTML for slash template and use first of all the new uh, method. So let's go ahead and keep this empty. So an empty string. And then after calling this method, we can go ahead and type in here, parse files. And let's go ahead and simply parse our only file that we have in here, the index.html. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. So as you can see, we have templates for slash index.html. And after doing that, rendering this template is actually pretty simple inside of Go. So the only thing that we need to do is type in here temple and then execute template. And after doing that, let's do a couple of things. Actually, before we continue, I forgot to do one thing and that is to wrap this entire file inside of a defined block. So what the defined block essentially allows us to do is instead of needing to execute an entire file, we can go ahead and define multiple blocks inside one particular file and then we simply need to call that uh, to execute that particular block based on its name that we defined and it makes it much more simpler to have multiple blocks inside one file instead uh, of having to separate our entire project into multiple smaller files. So let's go ahead and simply copy all of this. So we want to cut that entire part out. And after that, let's go ahead and define in here a new block and we'll call this one base. And after doing that, let's go ahead and paste this in here. 
And now, as you can see, it is wrapped around this defined block. And after doing that, let's move back to our main.go file and let's continue with this. So first of all, inside of this method, we want to pass in here our response writer, which is simply a dub. And then the second argument is going to be the name of our template, which as you just saw, it is base. And finally, we want to pass some data in here, which in this case, it is going to be nil since we don't have any data to pass to this template. So now let's go ahead and save this file and let's go ahead and navigate here to our project and inside our projects folder if we go ahead and type in here go run dot and we then navigate here to our browser to localhost port 3000 as you can see we get here this hello world and if we take a look really quickly here at our um, html as you can see we have here the hello world and also we have in here htmx go to do which is the title that we've defined for this particular page. Now, we want to ensure that we are actually importing our htmx.js file inside of this page. So that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So let's go ahead and move here back to our editor. And then inside of it, let's go ahead and simply paste this code. So what this code essentially allows us to do is to go ahead and look inside of the static folder for all of the files that are in there in order to be able to serve them as static files. So with all of this done, let's go ahead and move here back to our index.html file. And in here, let's simply go ahead and add our script tag that as you can see, the source is static for slash htmx.js. Now let's go ahead and restart our server. And after doing that, if we go ahead and refresh here our page, and if we take a look here at our network requests, as you can see, this file is being correctly imported into our page, which means that we are now able to go ahead and use HTMX in order to build this to-do list application. 